everybody, this is Green Spirit. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do another witchy book review, but with a little bit of a twist. I wanted to review two witchy cookbooks for all you kitchen witches out there or any other parent practitioner that likes to spend a little time in the kitchen. So let's get started. The first book that I have for you today, I've had for several years. I got it at Barnes & Noble and unfortunately I cannot tell you the price of it because it's not listed on the book. I want to say that I spent around $15. Uh, that's usually more than I pay for a book. I usually tend to buy mine second hand, but this was such a gorgeous book that I couldn't resist taking it home. So here we are. This is called A Sorcerer's Cookbook, Le Grimoire Enchanté by Brigitte Boulard Cordeaux. Recipes for Enchantment from Aphrodite's Oysters to Violet Bonbons. This is an absolutely gorgeous book. As you can see from the cover, it's got kind of an antique finish to it with little gold filigree. And it really kind of sets the tone for what is inside. This is an actual cookbook with a little bit of a witchy bent to it. So anybody really, you could give this to non-witches or pagan alike but it's it's quite magical in its presentation and its imagery and illustrations is just incredible so let's take a look at the inside when you open this book you'll notice that the pages are made to look a little bit weathered or antiqued as if maybe they're like tea stained so uh, i'm going to go really quickly through the table of contents uh it does have a forward and it also talks about the Sorcerer's Handbook, condiments and sauces, soups and stews, first courses and salads, meat and fish, desserts and sweets, jams and jellies, brews and potions, and a table of recipes. Um, it goes on to talk about hunting and gathering, magical plants, protected plants, sorcerer's herbs, and it says something like, their highly colorful vernacular names such as wormwood or black briny are a picturesque language that describes a sorcerer's favorite ingredients. So you have, for example, the humble garlic, okay? It has its common name, which is garlic root. It's got its Latin name, Aliara petiolata, and then it has its traditional vernacular, which is hedge garlic, poor man's mustard, okay? And it gives you um, information about sorcerer's nightshade and tips for a good harvest, okay? Then it tells to you about how to harvest and choose plants from edible uh, roots, delicious weeds, wild vegetables, flowers and, um, flowers and flavors, juicy algae, and wild fruit. And then I think that I love how this book included... Uh, Toxic, a list of toxic plants. So I don't know. I'm working off my laptop today, so I don't know how well you can see this, but I will try to put it close. Hopefully it will catch it. But it has a list of toxic plants with their common name, a botanical name, and the risks associated with consuming these types of plants. Um, it also will tell you about dangerous fruit. And the, another would be like poisonous flowers, flowers of temptation, which um, its verbiage is also quite beautiful. So not only is this book just beautiful in its illustrations and imagery, its vernacular is quite beautiful as well. So if you're into that kind of thing, it's quite beautiful to see. So it talks about um, where you can get food. And then... We're going to go ahead and get started on the actual recipes. I'm obviously not going to go through this entire book. Um, I want to say, let me tell you how many pages are in this book. There are, goodness, 231 uh, pages, including the index. So this is quite a large book, so I'm obviously not going to go through all of them. But I do want to kind of give you a snippet of what you can find in here and show you some of the best images that I found. So I'm going to start at the beginning. So there's a recipe for mint sauce. 
and its title is How to Make Him Wait. High and confit, put a little joy in your heart. And see, as you can see, it's made to look very much like a book of shadows, like a very vintage book of shadows with beautiful images of flowers and plants and photographs. Okay. This one is St. John's Wart, How to Find an Angel. It has a lot of vintage imagery. Find you. I love this image. This is one of my favorite images in this book. This is for a poppy brioche and says, Live in a moment of scarlet passion. Absolutely gorgeous. What's cool about this book is that not only does it give you the recipe in a very interesting way, but it also gives you information. For example, on um, this poppy right here, it says spice for uh, conversation. The red poppy belongs to Papera Barachi family and grows in fields along the side of the road. Its leaves are edged with long pointy insides or serrated segments and each serration ends in a straight whisker. Its bulbous urn shaped center contains a multitude of little dark round seeds from which the oil is extracted. So it gives you little tidbits of information as well. So if you're really into just beautiful imagery, great food, and just a fun way to kind of read a cookbook, this is a perfect book for you. I'm going to give you one more and then we're going to move on to the next book because I don't want to make this book or this uh, video super long. I know it's hard for me to keep them short. But this is a Raspberry Hawthorn Jam. And the title for this recipe is called Shelter from the Storm. So then, here it is. And like right below that, it says the spell. So the spell is in your recipe, which is really cool. So there you go. So I hope you guys check this book out. It's absolutely gorgeous. Give it a shot. Try some of the recipes. And even if you're not really into the whole cooking thing, I think it's just a beautiful book to have for your collection. Um, so there you go. Okay, the next book that I have is a book that I've had for about nine years. Uh, it is not an illustrated book. So if this is if you're really into needing cookbooks that have pictures, this is not the book for you. However, this book is perfect for anybody really use it for your family and such but it's really has a specific bent to it so it's perfect for espots uh, celebrations pagan gatherings that kind of thing this is called full moon feast food and the hunger for connection by jessica prentice and basically what this book does is it goes through each of the moon phases okay and has accompanying recipes for each of the moon phases. It gives um, information about the traditions of our ancestors, collective ancestors around the world, and what they would consume at different parts throughout the year or different seasons throughout the year. Um, it gives a little bit of a history of their um, agricultural practices and the reason why, you know, certain either plants or animals are eaten at a certain part in time. And it's absolutely delicious and just, it's a really great book to have. So I'm not, obviously, like I said, this book is not one that has images in it. However, it does have little table um, of, of information about uh, certain uh things pertaining to a, a particular food. So for example, if you go under the milk moon, then it'll give you a list of traditional animals besides cows that have been milked in different parts of the world for their milk and milk that you can use to um, create recipes and that kind of thing. So, Obviously, each of the recipes would then, for example, the milk moon, it would have a lot of milk-based 
recipes because that's the moon that you're in. So it's really a quite interesting book with a lot of history, a lot of personal storytelling. Um, it also has like under the me, it's actually, let's see. Okay, so like for example, under the corn moon, we have Suffer Free uh, Succotash, okay, and Calabacitas, which is squash, okay, with herbed crema, with herbed cream, okay. And then, for example, I'm going to pull up the Mead Moon because I want to kind of tell you some of the recipes that are in there. Okay. I bought this book again about nine years ago um, when I was still living in Washington State at a kind of used to new bookstore. Okay, so here we are at the Mead Moon, okay? And it, again, it starts with the history. And then when I was talking about those little kind of boxes, it has, for example, drinks of the gods, 13 traditional inebriated beverages. So then it tells you a list of them. So for example, it's got mead for Norse, wine for Europe, beer variations worldwide, Greek ale, Europe, Chang, Tibet, Nepal, Uki, East Africa, Bagche, Yucatan Peninsula, Saki, Japan, Chicha, South America, Sa, West Africa, Millet Beer, Africa, South America, and Asia, Sati, Scandinavia, and Tash, Ethiopia. Okay. Let's pull up the recipes. So under the Mead Moon, we've got how to make mellow mead, honeybee lemonade, a recipe called I Dream of Peaches and Cream, which again would have contain honey because of, you know, traditionally that's what meat is made from. So if you are a vegan um, or vegetarian, there are recipes in here for um, vegetarian meals. There might be some that you can adjust for veganism, but there are a lot of, because this is based on traditional food and um, traditionally there was a lot of um, animal consumption and dairy consumption in a lot of different parts of the world. This recipe book um, you might be able to adjust but the recipes just so that you're aware are very traditional. But if you have an interest in cooking for your espots, sharing um, food with um, other pagans for different types of gatherings. This is a, a really great book with a lot of history that I think is worth a check out. So those are the two books I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed kind of going through them. If you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you hit that like button. And if you really enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button to see any future videos from me. I hope you all have a wonderful day and blessed be and goodbye.